Joy Idris always has her hands full here at the Oyiza Orphanage in Ibada, Nigeria. The 25-year-old lives here and runs the facility along with her 27-year-old brother, Ige. While most young adults their age are out exploring life, they've accepted the responsibility of taking care of 38 children, including babies and teenagers. Sometimes uh, I meet people who say, what are you doing there? What do you mean? You're a big girl. Go out there, hand over the vision to one old woman and live your life. So it's challenging because I don't have my time to myself. It's a challenge her mother, Dr. Oyiza Adenuga, first welcomed when she started the orphanage back in 2006. One year later, Dr. Adenuga fell ill and died suddenly. Joy and Ige didn't hesitate to continue their mother's mission, even if it meant forfeiting college. Who knows what these children might become tomorrow? So we have to, I and my sister have to sacrifice our lives so that uh, the children, we cater for the children within our limited capacity. Oyiza Orphanage is just one among a growing number in Nigeria that is trying to address the country's ballooning population of helpless children. In 2010, Nigeria's president, Goodluck Jonathan, announced that there are over 7 million orphans and vulnerable children in the country. That's almost half the child population here. Back in 2007, Nigeria's government launched a detailed $1.6 billion plan of action to address the issue, but little has been done since. I know that in the last few years, um, this may sound totally pathetic, we have um, provided them, not even all of them, with at least 50 to 100,000 naira right periodically and when i say periodically i'm talking like biannually which is close to nothing 100,000 naira works out to be less than about 700 dollars spent locally here in oyo state where oyiza is based it's a drop in the bucket when you consider the size of the problem here at iwa road in ibadan you'll find some of nigeria's seven million plus orphans and vulnerable children hawking food items and begging for money Children exposed to the streets are prime targets for child traffickers and kidnappers. The dangers don't stop there. Some of the teenagers, they get pregnant by the street boys. And the ones that are made among the children that are hawking on the street, they come and cut out with those street children by engaging them in taking in their hem, smoking weed. And Ige says it's a daunting issue, so he and Joy focus on the children they've taken in. With little help from the government, they survive mainly on the goodwill of generous Nigerians. There was a time, there's no, no food, nothing. These kids were crying, holding on to me. Mommy, no food. And I was like, what am I going to do? I was crying. But there, there's always a way out. Sometimes when we go to that very critical stage, somebody will just come in. It may be very small, but that moment it will meet that need. Joy has found some stability in this whirlwind mission. She recently returned to school where she just completed her second year in a five-year nursing program. Ige says he will start school again once Joy is finished. In the meantime, he continues to alter his personal life for the sake of the children. I have a fiance. I'm preparing to get married. Like I tell my fiance, you marry me, you marry the kids before marrying me. For independent sources, Abby Ishola.